Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create a seasonal ornament in Adobe Illustrator using the new 3D tools and we're going to work out some of the limitations of those tools so that we protect ourselves so that we'll be able to recolor our ornaments. I'm going to start with a new file. I'm just making something that is a thousand by a thousand pixels in size. We're going to start with the snowflakes. I'm just going to move everything across. I'm holding the space bar as I'm moving my artboard out of the way. The reason for this is I'm going to make a white snowflake and you won't see it on the artboard. So I'm going to make it so that it has a white stroke and it has no fill at all. I'm going to make a line, just really simple stuff. You're going to get the pen tool. You're going to click once. You're going to hold the shift key and click again. That's your line. Press the escape key to finish that off going to target my line. You can see up here I don't have access to the stroke tools. It's really frustrating that Illustrator does that to us. So you may need to go down to your stroke panel over here. Click this little icon to open up all the options for the stroke panel. We're going to give it a rounded cap. It just looks better that way. And we're going to increase the weight until we get a sort of nice weight line. Okay. Now I'm going back to the pen tool. I'm going to make a really short line. Click once, hold the shift key, click a second time. That's it. Press escape. So this is going to be one of the little V shapes for my snowflakes. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to choose object transform and then rotate because I want to rotate this to negative 30 degrees. So just type minus 30 should roll over on its side like that. Click OK. Now we're going to make a duplicate and reflect it. Object, transform, reflect. We're going to reflect over the vertical so that we get the opposite direction. Click copy and you've got both of them. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what you're doing because it's really hard otherwise. I'm going to move them over so they form a little V with each other. And then we're going to select them and we're going to expand them with object, expand and just click OK. And that makes them filled shapes instead of strokes. So I'm going to do the same over here just to save time because we're going to need to in a minute. So we're going to expand that again, a filled shape rather than a stroke. Before you do what I just did, select over these and we're going to join them together. I'm going to the Pathfinder panel, nice easy tool to use. You can find it by choosing Window Pathfinder and just click on this option and that makes a filled V so that both pieces are joined together and they'll travel together. I'm going to place this where I want it to be which is just over the top of my line. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to hold down the Alt key on a PC. That would be Option on a Mac. And I'm just going to drag this down because this is going to give me my spacing. If you find that it's wiggling around a little bit, add the Shift key to that. So it's Alt Shift on a PC, Option Shift on a Mac. That just makes sure that goes in a perfectly vertical direction. Now before you let go of everything, hold down the Control key, Command on the Mac and press the letter D. And every time you do, you're going to create another one of these little Vs. Now you can rearrange these as you like, but I'm going to make this really simple. So I'm just going to select over all of my shapes and from the Pathfinder, I'm going to click Unite. So that just unites them into a single shape. I can make that a bit smaller. I'm going to hold the Shift key as I drag it down to just resize it in proportion. Now let's make our snowflake from this. We're going to select it. We're coming over here to the Rotate tool. You're going to click on that and then you're going to locate the anchor at the bottom of this shape here. Hold down the Alt key on a PC, Option on a Mac and click once. Now I've already been in here and I am rotating negative 30. Actually, let's make it 30 degrees this time. We're going to send it over here, but we want the original, the upright one and this copy. So I'm just going to click here on copy. This made shape, the one that we just created by our rotation is still selected. Leave it selected. Hold down the control key and tap the letter D again. What you're going to do is rotate this around and when you get to the end, you're just going to click away. So we've got all the shapes that we need to make a snowflake. Now, every time you make these snowflakes, the middle of it is going to look very different. So this is different to the one I made earlier today. It's perfect. I'm just going to select over it. And again, we're going back to this Unite option because what we want in the last panel is just a single object. And that's what we've got here, this compound path. Exactly what we need. Okay, so I'm going to make it a bit smaller. I'm going to zoom back out and I'm just going to move it out of the way. I'm sort of looking at it relative to my artboard. I think it's still a bit big. This is not rocket science. Uh, we're going to get a chance to 
make it fit anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to select on this, I'm going to Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. What I want to do is to move this horizontally, so I'm just going to start moving it, but before I do, let's just up our copies to about 4 or 5, because that's what we're going to need. If we up our copies, we're going to see the result when we start moving it, and we want spaces between these. It's going to be really difficult later on if we don't have pretty good spaces. I'm just looking at this 180, I'm going to add a couple more to my transformation, because these are going to be the snowflakes that are going on our spherical ball. So 7 copies, and for me I'm marching mine across about 180, maybe even 200. You could do yours whatever makes sense to you. Click OK. Now I'm going to do that again. Effect, Distort and Transform, and then Transform. Ignore this message, you are going to apply a new effect exactly what you need to. So what we're going to do is to make just one copy this time. We're going to knock it down vertically, so we're going to increase its vertical direction to, I don't know, let's have a look at about 160 and let's do the horizontal move to half of what we did earlier. So I think we did 200, so I'm just taking that out to 100. I might bring this down to 150. I'm going to make notes of these values just simply because it might help me in a minute. So I'm just going to click OK. And we're going to do it once more. Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform, ignore the message that we're getting here. We're going to add a few more copies, maybe about five, and we're going to do a vertical movement. And all we're looking to do is to make a grid of these. So last time I moved 150, so I'm just doubling it here. So this is giving me a nice little grid of my shapes. Let's have a look. Probably a bit longer than I needed to, so let's go and reselect our shape. Let's go to the Appearance panel, because the Appearance panel is showing us what we're doing. These are the transformations, and they're stacked. So this is the initial transformation that moved things across. This next one is the one that moved things down and across. Here we are. And the last one in the stack is the one that moved everything down. So I've got a few too many transformations here. I think I'll just bring that back one. Now we're going to grab hold of our shape and we're going to expand this. So we're choosing Object Expand Appearance. And that's going to make each of these individual shapes within a group. So let's go to the Laz palette. You can see here that we've got groups and groups and groups and groups. Well, I'm just going to start ungrouping them. And I'm going to keep going. Because each of these shapes was a single object, I know that I can keep ungrouping until I get just a whole series of compound paths. So each one of these is a compound path. Each one of these is selected and it's now in the Laz palette, not inside a group. Well, now I'm just going to make it one group. So this is nice and tidy, one group with all of my snowflakes in it. So the next step is to save the snowflakes so that we can put them onto our seasonal ornament. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to the Symbols panel. Now if you don't see the Symbols panel, Window and then Symbols, just select that. I'm going to hit the plus sign here, I'm going to call this Snowflakes. Ignore everything else, just click OK. Now at this point, if you want to be able to use these snowflakes later on, since you've gone to all the trouble of doing them, let's just save them. I'm going to just click away from my shapes. I'm going to select all of the symbols in this dialog and just trash them, because we don't need any of them. This is the snowflake symbol. So I'm going to save it. So I'm going to click the menu here, go to Save Symbol Library. Now this is going into my Adobe the Illustrator 28 settings. You may just want to check to make sure that it's going in the right place as it does have a nasty habit of remembering the wrong place for these. So I'm going to call this Snowflakes, all one word, and just click Save. And that will save this symbol set with the snowflakes in it so that we can use it anytime we like. I'm just going to delete that, don't need it at this stage. It's still in the Symbols library. So now we need the shape for our ornament. So I'm going to select the circle, the ellipse tool. I'm going to make it just strokes. I don't want any fill. I do want a stroke. And for my stroke, I want a blue color. So I'm thinking a sort of navy blue like this. It's a pretty good option to use. So let's just go with that. Let's hold the shift key down as we drag out a shape. 
I'm going to the direct selection tool here and I'm just going to drag over this anchor point here because I want to delete it. This is going to give us the shape that is going to make our 3D object. So we're going back to the selection tool. So we're going to effect and then 3D and materials and we're going to choose revolve because we want to go round in a circle and that's given us our revolution. Now there are lots of options you can use here but I suggest that you just stick at this stage with what you get by default. The only thing that you might want to be aware of is that if your shape was going in the opposite direction, your half circle was going in the opposite direction, this is what you would get. So you would just offset from a different edge. So that's probably all that you absolutely need to know in this dialogue. Everything else should work out reasonably well. We're just going to go and add our snowflakes. So I'm going across here to materials, making sure that you've got your shape selected so you can get to materials. And we're going to graphics. And here is my graphic. This is my snowflake. So as soon as I click on it, it's going to be added to my shape. Now, it's a lot bigger than it probably needs to be. So I'm just going to see if I can scale it down a bit. I'll try 75 and then tab away. Obviously, I can go even smaller, 50, tab away. Now, sometimes you won't be able to do that. Sometimes, depending on the symbol that you're using, size and the shape size, it's going to be filled automatically. But in this case, it wasn't filled enough. Now let's go to the render options. And with the render options, what I want to do is to make this look as good as it can, but I have to leave it as a 3D effect. I can't expand it because expanding it using these new tools in Adobe Illustrator will mean I can't recolor it. So we've sort of gone one step forward and one step back with these new tools. So just be aware of that. So from these render options, I'm going to set this up for ray tracing and I'm going to do a medium trace on this. I'm just going to click render. And that'll give us a look as to what it's going to look like. You can see its lighting is here. If we go to lighting, you can see this is its light source here. It's a intensity of 70. Just leave it at that for now. So I'm just going to close that down. I've got my shape. If I want to, I can resize it. And I do want to resize it. I'm holding the shift key as I'm scaling it down. And it's now a much smaller shape, much better for my little illustration here. So I'm going to go and make a rectangle. I'm going to reuse my blue color here. Just going to, actually I might make a rounded rectangle. I think it might look better. Rounded rectangle. I'm just going to drag in a small rounded rectangle. It's going to be this top of my ornament here. And then I'm going to the ellipse tool. I'm going to flip these around so this is just a stroke and drag out holding the shift key a very small circle. Let's make the stroke on that a bit bigger. It's going to bring it down so it looks like it's a hanger for my element here. This is a stroke shape. The one underneath is a filled shape. So I'm going to the stroke shape here. Object, expand, just click OK. I'm going to grab the two top shapes, which is the circle and the little stem thing. And I'm going to put them together. So I'm going to pathfind. I'm just going to make a single object out of them. Now they're on top of everything. In the last palette, I'm just going to move them behind everything because they're going to look better tucked behind my shape. I also think that they should be moved down a little bit. If I'm happy with them, I'm going to put them in a group. Just select both objects and choose object and then group. So now I can alt drag a duplicate away and just arrange them in my document. I'm going to show you how to recolor them. So we're going to select one of these, go to the recolor artwork dialog. It's just one color. Everything is the same color. So we can just drag around here to make it a different color. So just choose the color that you want it to be and then just click away and we'll make this a green color. If you made the top of your ornament a different color, then you would have two colors that you could change here, but we've only just got one. I'm going to finish off with a rectangle that is the size of my artboard. That's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. Let's just line it up on the artboard. Let's place it behind everything with object arrange, send to back. And then I can just double click on this and just change the color of it or even easier would be to select it and go to the recolor artwork tool, which just makes life so much easier when you're red coloring things. Of course, if you want to fill it with a gradient, you could do that. You go to the swatches panel, 
go to the Swatch Libraries menu and go and have a look at gradients and there are a whole lot of gradients that you could use here. For example, Seasons. Here in the Seasons area we've got a Summer Radial Gradient which is a sort of red colour. If you've selected that you can go to the gradient itself and make changes to it if you wish. We can finish up our design with some strings to hold things. So I'm just going to turn the fill off. Let's go and get a white stroke. Let's go back to the pen tool. Just going to click and click again holding the shift key. Let's just go and make it a little bit wider. I've lost my stroke panel so I'm just going to window and then stroke which will make life a little bit easier. We'll just move it across a little bit. Once I've got one I can copy it to the other. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned how to use the 3D tools in Adobe Illustrator to create some seasonal ornaments and I wish you all the best of the season. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.